Hello everyone, it's Davide here and welcome back to Learning Finance. Finally, today we are seeing big green on Chinese markets. Here we can see Alibaba stock approaching 174 at the moment. We have seen a big spike in JD.com, more than 13% actually. Uh, we have had earnings yesterday, so we are gonna obviously take a look at those. And well, the tax play didn't play very well, okay, so obviously, I had to buy back my shares, forget about offsetting previous gains. I bought back both Alibaba stock and JD.com. So I'm going to obviously uh, show you where I bought them and if I lost something, if I gained something. Now, I want to precise one thing. In previous videos, actually, I think that many people, as I predicted, didn't watch the video, didn't understand what I meant by that. Assuming that I was bearish on Alibaba, bearish on JD. Well, guys, I have been saying that I'm long-term bullish for months, okay? So it's not that I changed my mind in one day. What I did was a pure technical attempt to reduce a little bit of capital gain tax in the short term. Obviously, it didn't play out well, meaning that I bought back exactly the same amount of shares at basically the same prices, so nothing has changed in the long-term position. However, I will not be able to offset gains, okay? Simply because of what is called the wash sales rules. Anyway, we are gonna take a look at all of that. Obviously, can this be a new beginning for Chinese stocks? Have the market touched a bottom with these very low uh, prices? Well, let's try to find out, guys. The only thing I ask you is please leave me an like it's very important and I thank you for it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new updates let's begin let's take a look Alibaba stock today is breaking above that important resistance over there which was the pandemic lows at $170 per share on the IDR tonight also the Hong Kong market went, went green we see Alibaba uh, touching 166.5 the Hang Seng closed 7% positive obviously the trend is still negative okay we have a lot of road to cover before changing the overall trend but I bought back my shares all right I bought back my shares and simply because I prefer to not risk of actually remaining here the only risk with that strategy was a b-shaped recovery so I don't want to risk that now just to make you understand probably if you haven't already if you haven't watched the full previous video because I saw many comments say all right now you're bearish blah 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 guys watch the actual video I explain why I did it but anyway, uh, just to summarize, probably to explain a bit better. What I did, I tried to take a loss on both Alibaba stock and JD in order to offset some gains from previous stocks that I sold. Now, when you do that, actually what you are doing is taking a loss and there is this thing which is called the wash sales rules. Actually, you cannot create artificial losses. Uh, there is this rule that says that you should be in a stock 30 days before, sell it and wait 30 days to actually buy it back if you want to claim the loss and reduce the tax burden. Now, as Alibaba broke this very important level, 170, first of all, my loss on the share was enough in order to offset the gain. So why I didn't do it earlier? Well, simple enough, because the, the loss was not enough, okay? The thought process over there has been like, if I sell over here, what happens is that, well, maybe the stock continues to move lower, Maybe we just go sideways for a while. Uh, then those 30 days pass. I buy back the shares because obviously this has nothing to do with my long-term vision on those two companies. Okay, so I think it's clear now. I buy back the shares, but in the same time, I am legally allowed to offset gains. Okay, so that was the thought process. Now, where all of that it can go wrong it can go wrong if just a fake breakout and we go like that in a v-shaped recovery okay so 
At that particular point, I had to buy back my shares at the same price, actually, where I sold them. So I do not lose anything on that. But I will not be able to offset the gains because those 30 days, they have not passed. Okay? So that's it, actually. Actually, with Alibaba, I sold everything. The average selling price was $172 per share. I bought those back this morning and market open at 169.25 okay so i gained only two dollars fifty actually per share on that but with jd what i gained on alibaba i actually lost it on jd because the average selling price was 66.91 dollars per share i bought yesterday the first chunk at 64.77 and actually today a market opened the second chunk at $71.62 per share. Average entry price for me is $68.16 per share. Okay, so on that one I lost $1.30 actually per share. So but overall the no money had been lost. The position are exactly the same as they were before. The only thing that changed is that the tax attempt that I have taken it didn't happen. Okay, so that's the only thing that changed. I tried to, to take an advantage short term of that. It didn't play out well, but anyway, long term, guys, nothing has changed. I told in the videos and I'm telling you once again right now. Now, I hope that is finally clear. <laughs> so I don't like where actually people just completely don't watch the video, write comments based on nonsense. So I'm not bearish. <laughs> My opinion has not changed. I still think that China will become the first economy in the world and that the middle class is going to explode explode okay so the expanding consequently so absolutely nothing has changed in my mind it was a short-term opportunity i tried to take advantage of it and obviously the market went the opposite direction okay, so i bought everything back as it was before it might be funny if the market tomorrow's comes back and makes new new lows okay <laughs> that can happen anyway uh, long term nothing has changed however let's take a look now at jd's earnings which they released yesterday so they came out with revenues of 39.3 billion an increase of 26.2 percent compared to the previous quarter of the previous year now absolutely fine so the growth is great the thing to say is that margins are getting thinner now that's both bad and great it's because in the short term you are seeing a business which is decreasing its uh, profitability uh, but that is also great because they are using those money to actually increase and grow the business and reach more market so by marketing investments and things like that it reminds me a lot of amazon six seven years ago that is also good because if you are investing to actually increase the market share and develop your business what happens is that maybe in five six years time they will be able to do like what amazon is doing now increasing profitability finally jd might do the same they have the technology they have the automation anyway as of now they decreased in terms of net income just 123 million that went lower is lower than one percent in this quarter uh, so free cash flow obviously they're gonna be lower as well uh, in 2021 very likely uh, however i have updated the valuation so they beat expectations in terms of revenue now for the valuation what i have done is actually reducing the free cash flow margins so in 2020 they were 4.68 percent they were increasing so 2019, 3.41%. 2018 1.63% we had a three years of growing trend however um, I expect for 2021 to be back down in terms of net we can see the two quarters that we have data on obviously Q3 and Q4 we don't know uh, how much those are gonna be but in terms of net margins we see that Q1 has been 1.93% 
Q2 0.3%. Okay, so obviously there are investments. Obviously, JD is trying to grow now, is sacrificing profitability at the moment. However, I'm not much worried about it long term. Uh, so in terms of the valuation, guys, I just put analyst estimates over there, 148.2, 180.3 billion in 2022. As of now, we see that they have already done in 2021 70.3 billion meaning that they have already done 47.43% of those 148.2 that are forecasted. And if we take a look at the history of JD, we see how 2020 actually Q1 is the weaker one. Then we had a decent Q2, then Q3 tends to be lower historically than Q2. And then the massive quarter is Q4, okay, with holidays and all that kind of stuff. And this was exactly the same also if we take a look at 2019 over there. We see a Q1 uh, and then a better Q2, and then Q3 becomes lower than Q2, uh, and then the massive Q4. So I expect the same this year as well. Anyway, I do think that this is reachable, okay? 148.2 billion in 2021 this year. Remember that the market cap is lower than that, okay? So in terms of price to sales ratio, for 2021 uh, forecasted, we are actually so far below one. Uh, that's kind of interesting to hear. Then obviously growing on until 2029, uh, decreasing pace, I put just to be conservative. And the free cash flow margin, as you can see, I decreased it. Last year was 4.68. I say, well, it's going to be lower, 3%. And then growing, but not that crazy, just to be conservative until a 5% in 2029. I think that they can do way better than that. But anyway, let's see what we get. With a rate of return of 11%, perpetual growth of 3.5, fair value today, fair price of 119. The price today is around 73, 74, meaning that the stock is still almost 40% undervalued, okay, according with this valuation. So obviously, uh, am I bearish long term? Absolutely no. Uh, is JDI buy? Yes, is Alibaba a buy? Obviously. Below 250, Alibaba is always a buy, no matter the price you get. 170, 160, 180, 190. It's always great long term if you are bullish on China. Can this be the finally the green that we needed? Can this be the end of the Chinese trouble bluff? But we don't know, okay? We don't know regulations might continue to go on in the future. Obviously, it's all about will China want to destroy their companies completely? I don't think so. Our troubles completely ended at this point? I don't think that neither. Obviously, I expect a little bit of more ease in terms of investors. Uh, investors tend to adapt to markets. We now know that Chinese markets, every three, four years, they tend to come out with massive regulations. But anyway, over the long term, in my opinion, uh, there is still an opportunity and I'm actually in because of this particular reason. Well, I hope you find the video interesting. I hope you now have more clear uh, that I am not bearish on Chinese stocks. Okay, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.